If you have ever built a Lego set, chances are that you've noticed this warning here that tells you not to shoot plastic at bald people. Now obviously this is because human hair has some remarkable properties, and without those luscious locks there is nothing protecting your grandpa from a stray Lego stud. But What if that stud was going faster? What if that stud was flying so fast that not even modern day hair equipment would be enough to stop it? What if you could press that stud shooter hard enough to kill? How hard would you have to shoot it? How fast would you have to be able to move your finger to exert a lethal force? Keep watching, we'll find out. Considering what a stud shooter is analogous to in real life, that of course being a... a pew pew, Analyzing what makes a pew pew projectile so dangerous is a good place to start. When you launch a pew pew projectile towards an object, it has a lot of kinetic energy. That object, whatever it might be, absorbs a lot of that kinetic energy, and actually quite frequently, it will absorb all of that kinetic energy. That absorption is inevitably what causes any damage to said object. That makes this a matter of giving a Lego stud the same kinetic energy as a pew pew projectile. If we consider the weaker pew pews, like the real world equivalent of Han Solo's blaster, we are talking about kinetic energies of around 500 joules. So we just need to figure out how fast we need to get a Lego stud moving before it has 500 joules of kinetic energy. The formula to find kinetic energy is pretty simple, it's just half of the mass times the velocity squared. A single Lego stud weighs 12 hundredths of a gram. That means that to give it 500 joules of kinetic energy, we would have to get it moving at almost 2,900 meters per second. So how do we do that? When you analyze a stud shooter, you'll notice that the mechanism is rather simple. Here is a slightly pixelated close-up of that little gray piece that you put in your stud shooters. And yes, we are going to use the older design here, that way there is some low-hanging fruit for a crappy part 2 if I ever feel like it. So taking a look at that close-up, we'll notice that this point here is what actually pushes the stud out of the stud shooter. The faster you can get that point to move, then the faster the stud will move on its way out. If we ignore stupid obnoxious things like friction, then it stands to reason that the speed of that tip, whatever speed it might be, will be the same as the speed of the exiting stud. So using the fact that that tip is exactly 5 millimeters from the axis of rotation. We find that to get it moving at a tangential velocity of 2900 meters per second, we would need to get it rotating at a rate of over five and a half million RPMs. For reference, even a very large airplane engine only goes at about 10,000 RPMs. Well then, in order to get it rotating that fast, how hard do you have to push it? Well, if you're a normal person, which for the record I have never claimed to be, you're probably going to be pushing it from right about here, which is 7 millimeters away from the axis of rotation. So to get it moving at 5.5 million RPM, you're going to have to be able to move your finger at a speed of 4,041 meters per second. Or just a little bit over 9,000 miles per hour, meaning that this would not be legal in a school zone. And there you have it. If you can manage to move your finger at Mach 11.8, then this becomes a deadly weapon. Uh, assuming that the stud doesn't melt as it moves through the air. Anyways, thank you for listening to my rant all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and you don't have to admit it to your therapist. If you clicked on an end screen video, though, then that, that you would have to admit to them.